front row seats where you can directly ask me questions, make any comments, and it'll come straight through to me. And if you're on the, any of the other platforms, you can put the comments in the comments box and it will still be passed through to me on Zoom. So Zoom is like Zoom, Zoom is like the front row seat. So I just want to say hello to everybody who's joining us on Zoom. Um, got Mandeep, Holly, Danielle, Harvey, Nick, Nikhil, hope I said that right, Margaret and Rhoda. Good to have you all folks. Thanks so much for joining me. Now, tonight is a webinar. It's not just me talking. And part of that means that during the webinar, I'm going to ask you for maybe some examples or something, anything. And the only reason is because I want to get your feedback. I want to tailor make the webinar just for you. I want to make sure that we're covering stuff that's relevant to you and that I'm answering your questions as we go along. So, uh, and also because when I'm on Zoom and Facebook, you, you, when everybody has their cameras off, I don't know if anybody's alive. So I, I could be just literally talking to a robot. I don't know. I don't actually know. So it really helps me when you're putting comments in uh, on the feedback. And by the way, if you want to put your cameras on as Yawar, thank you so much Yawar for joining us and sticking your camera on and making the example there. If anybody else wants to put your camera on, please feel free to do so. It's nice for me to be able to see you. Um, I can't see you on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, but I can see you on Zoom. So if you want, you can do that. If you don't want, it's okay, no problem. But please do pop your comments in throughout the, throughout the uh, event. Harvey, thanks very much for coming on board. And Nick Hale, great to have you all. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, folks. So, and hi, Danielle. Wavy hand. I, I see you waving the old hand there. Okay, folks. So, um, where are we going to start? We're going to start at the beginning. Ta da! Basically, to introduce myself and the subject, I want to just go over that very quickly first with you, right? The webinar tonight, and it's not just me talking, I'm just going to give you some basics and ask you for examples so that you really get the data. The webinar tonight is based off a book, and that book is called Dianetics, which means through the mind. Dianetics, through the mind, written by this gentleman. His name is L. Ron Hubbard. This is what the webinar is based on. And this gentleman, L. Ron Hubbard, also developed another subject, which you may have heard of, called Scientology. And that word means a study of knowledge, and that came later. And this particular webinar is mainly based on this book. But if you have any questions about the connection between the two, Dianetics and Scientology, because a lot of people have heard, oh, Tom Cruise is into Scientology and John Travolta and all these kind of things, so they don't know what it is. So you can ask um, Michelle, who's the host for this evening, send her a question and she'll answer any question that you have. OK, so anyway, that's what it's about. Now, my promise to you tonight is to give you some key, key basics about self-confidence and also what's the underlying thing that holds you back and then what you need to do about it, okay? But before I do, we're going to do a practice run on the exercises that I'm going to ask you to do. So this is going to be a practice on participation. All I want you to do is pop into the chat, the little thing at the bottom, where you're from, where you're logging in from. That's all I want to know. It's pretty straightforward, straight down the line. Where are you logging in from? Because I like to see where my audience is. Obviously, when I'm doing a live webinar, I can see everybody's in front of me. But when I'm not doing, uh, sorry, I'm doing a live one, but when I'm doing uh, one in person, I can see everybody in front of me. But when I'm doing one on Zoom or online, I just don't know where everybody is. So if you would please write in the chat, where you're logging in from or where you're from, your city, your county, your country, um, that would be great. So it gives me an idea. And I'm here, uh, everybody is, um, is actually commenting and I'm missing you all. So give me a second. Okay, Holly, glad you got sorted. Uh, oh, Sylvia is the host, okay. Ireland, Holly, great stuff. Harvey from Manchester, hi, Mark, Harvey. Um, big football match at the weekend there, Harvey. Uh, Nikhil from London. Hi, Nikhil. Uh, Lewis from Azores, Portugal. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us all the way from Azores. Fernando from London. Hi, Fernando. Margaret from Cork. Lovely Cork. Thank you, Margaret. 
Uh, Yawar from Dublin, lovely. And Sergio, Spanish living in Dublin, fantastic. And Rhoda's from Dublin as well. Absolutely fantastic. Folks, thank you so much for being here. Got a good spread of people from Dublin, Cork, Ireland, England, Portugal. Yeah, so lovely. Lovely to have you all here. Okay, now, while you're on the webinar, turn off your TV, put any distractions outside the door, except if you have a girlfriend and she's there or your wife is there. She's not going to take to that too kindly, okay? So just try to get as less distractions. Turn off the TV, you know, if you're listening to Spotify at the same time or if you're watching a football match, as one of my friends told me earlier on, he was, he was watching one of my webinars, but he confessed that he was watching my webinar, but he was also watching a football match at the same time. So he was... <laughs> so if you have a football match on, just turn it off, please, because I really want you to get this data. Um, I want you to stay till the very end because at the end for everybody who stays I have a very special offer that I want to go over with you so please stay till the end will be about 45 minutes I'm going to keep it nice and snappy for you give some give you some good data and then let you go all right um, to give you a bit of an idea of who I am as I mentioned my name is Vincent maybe I didn't mention it Vincent Kelly I'm from uh, Kildare Anybody who's not from Ireland, it's a county not too far from Dublin. And um, moved to Dublin in the 90s, studied personnel management as part of a business studies degree course. Went traveling uh, because I just went traveling, as students do. And uh, came across this book in Germany in 1992. Found it interesting and found it workable and it helped people. And it was using a natural therapy and uh, it kept working and kept working and kept working on people. So I thought, you know something, there must be something in this. So I got trained on it and I've been delivering seminars, webinars, dealing with people on a one-to-one -one basis. I'm a trained Dianetics counselor myself and I've been helping people for over 25 years on this subject, educating them on the subject, one-to-one -one groups. So this stuff works and that's the only reason I'm here tonight to give you some basics that are going to help you on this confidence issue with this subject, okay? Um, I want to give you a question before we get into the data. My question for you is this and I'd like you to practice either your thumbs up or your smiley face or your yes in the comments box to this question. Here's the question. Ready? Would your life be better if you had real natural self-confidence in those different areas? Give me a yes or a no. I mean, if there's no comments, it's fine. Okay, I'll take it. But uh, let me know if life would be better if you had good natural confidence in yourself. Holly, yes. Um, thank you, Yawar. Uh, Harvey, yes. Fernando, Holly, Nickel, big yes. Yawar, absolutely. Fantastic. Danielle, absolutely. Sergio, yes. Good. So, uh, you know something, I was kind of expecting that answer because it's kind of, yeah, it is a basic. So, let's launch into this. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to give you three basics, okay? Okay? Three basics plus one um, major thing, okay? The major thing is overall more important than these three basic things which I'm going to go over, but these three basic things are also vital for confidence. Now, for me personally, and to, so that you don't think that I'm just here, uh, you know, trying to tell you all about confidence without having my own personal experience. I used to be very shy uh, when I was in school, a uh, teenager, very withdrawn. I uh, definitely didn't believe in myself, definitely didn't have the confidence to go for things, loads of ideas, but just didn't push myself, didn't really believe that I could do it for various reasons, which I'll go over with you tonight. And it affected me getting a girlfriend, um, getting into projects, starting up little business ventures that I had thought about. Uh, it stopped me in just getting to know people better, holding my own in lots and lots of different areas. Now, 
I want to tailor these basics to you. So what I want to find out from you is what is the area of your life, and you can pop this into the chat, what is the area of your life that confidence affects you most in? Or what is the area that you'd like to grow in confidence in? So what is that area in your life where you'd like to have improved confidence? If you don't mind, pop it into the chat because I want to make sure to cover uh, basic for yourself as well here. Okay. Um, good. Margaret got it 100%. Fantastic. Harvey, public speaking. Thank you. Holly, relationships and in work. Got it. Uh, Nickel, professional. Lewis, relationship. Thank you. Anybody else? Where does lack of confidence uh, affect you? Where do you want to improve? Okay, I'm just going to write these down so I make sure I, I get them. Speaking. Um, Yawar Social, got it. Work, speaking, business, Danielle, got that. And career, relationships. Okay, so we've got kind of a blend of things, public speaking, in social circumstances. Um, what was that one there? Career and relationships. What else have we got here? Business. Okay. Perfect. So this is definitely going to be up your alley. So let's get straight into this. Now, uh, and by the way, uh, I told you about my own situation, right? When I came across this subject and applied these things, it really made a massive difference for me in my life, okay? In my confidence. Am I the most confident guy in the whole world? No, I'm not. But I know what I know, and I know it very well. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so folks, let's go over basic number one, okay? Now, a couple of these things you're going to have familiarity with already, but it's really important because, uh, okay, Danielle, got that? It's really important because some people think that all you have to do is fake it till you make it. Pretend that you're confident and it'll all be grand. Pretend that you can fly an airplane. Just be confident and it'll all be perfect. And then you get into the airplane and you end up nowhere, okay? Or you say to yourself, you know what? I'm really great in relationships. But then you get into your first relationship and you make an absolute dog's breakfast out of it. So there's more to it. And the first thing you're going to have to get is competence. Okay? Competence means having knowledge and skill in a certain area. Okay? So if you are competent as a driver, you will also feel confident. If you are competent in your job or in your business, you will also feel Confident. If you are competent, in other words, if you know and you've got the skills in relationships, you are going to be confident. So if you came to the webinar tonight thinking, Vincent's just going to give me a magic wand, bang, he's going to make me confident. Uh, it's the wrong webinar. Maybe there's some other miraculous webinar out there that does that. But a person can feel great think they're very confident and be in really good shape mentally. But if, they, if they're not competent in that specific area of their life, it is going to affect their confidence. So for example, if you start as a mechanic and you don't know your stuff, you've got gaps in your knowledge, you've got gaps in your skill, it is going to affect your confidence. You're not going to be sure of yourself. Okay? Every single person on this webinar is confident in a certain area of life. You are confident in a certain area of your life, I guarantee you. I don't care what it is, cooking, handling the kids, dealing with your partner, doing your job, you know how to do your job. And the reason you know that is because you're competent. Now, the ingredients of competence are study, Sorry, none of us want to go back to school really, but study is important. You have to know what you're talking about. 
Next one is practice. It's all very well learning how to drive a car, but if you don't practice, you'll end up in the ditch. And the next one is experience. With every single area of life, in order to become competent, you need study, practice and experience. Now, what I'd like you to do as your next exercise is this. Here's your next exercise. I want you to think about one area of your life where you are confident. Where you are confident. One area. Now, I don't care if it's a little thing, like you're confident at putting out the bins, or you're confident in running your business, or you're confident in doing surgeries. I don't care. But just please pop in the chat one area of your life where you do feel confident in yourself. You are confident. So let's not look at the non-confident. Just look at the confident. Where do you... Where, what area of your life where you don't even have to think? You know, nobody can shake you. Okay. For example... Um, I'm holding this bottle here. I don't know if you can see it. It's grey. Okay, this is a grey bottle. It might appear to be black on the screen, but it's grey. I know it's grey. If somebody comes along to me and tells me it's white, it's not going to make any difference to my certainty. I know this bottle is grey. Okay. Because I observed it, I know what the colour grey is. There you go. I've had practice and experience looking at great things, and so I know. So when you know something, you're unshakable, and your confidence is going to be there. So let me just have a look and see what we have. Harvey, driving, brilliant, exactly. Very good. Holly, public speaking, presenting, friendships, writing essays, fantastic. Great examples, Holly. Um, Danielle, your job doing here, fantastic. You know, we've got really confident, really competent, hairdressers who are also confident in that areas. You might not be confident in social interactions, but you're very confident in, well, of course, hairdressers do have to talk to people a lot, so you're probably very good in that too. Okay, next one is Margaret, socially. You are your work and job, fantastic. And Rhoda, driving, brilliant. The reason you're good at those areas and you're confident is because you are competent. You know what you're doing. So regardless of everything else I'm going to tell you tonight, if you think you can be confident in your life without competence, without knowing what you're doing, you could feel amazing, the most happy person in the whole world. But if you don't know how to drive a car, you are not going to feel competent when somebody gets in to tell you to drive the car. You're not going to feel confident. So confident, competence is absolutely vital. So in those areas of social interaction, um, running your business, your career, these things, you have to study, you have to practice, and get experience. Now, I'm going to just touch off one little thing here. I'm not going to go into this area too much because when you know what practice is, just practice it as much as it takes. And when you talk about experience, if you're trying to learn how to run a business, then you should get experience with somebody who is already successful, not somebody who hasn't a clue and has failed in every other business they did. So when you're picking somebody to teach you or to help you, always pick somebody who is successful in that area and they take you under their wing. One little thing I want to show you about this subject of study. A lot of people don't want to study because they didn't have great experiences in school and they just couldn't wait to get out of school. I was one of those. I was um, in school. I was a, um, I used to memorize things a lot, but I wasn't really a great learner. I just memorized and passed exams. It was fantastic, but didn't really gain a whole lot of knowledge. So study is extremely important. And at the end, I'm going to show you this little booklet called The Technology of Study. It's how to study properly. This 
has made a massive, massive difference for me in my life in terms of confidence. I know this sounds weird. You think, oh, Vincent, I don't want to go back to school. None of us do, particularly. But if you know how to study properly, you're going to do much better. So I'm going to show you one little basic from this. And uh, this particular book, I'm going to tell you a bit more about the end. It goes over three basics which prevent you from learning things. And you can teach this to your kids as well. And this one here, there's loads of pictures here, is this one here. Okay. Now. Okay, so the bottom line here is this. And it shows it in the pictures. I'm just going to read it out to you. When you are reading a book, or you're studying anything, okay? Doesn't matter what you're studying. So let's say you want to become confident in social interaction. So you're reading a book about how to talk to people, how to get on with people, or how to run your business, okay? When you're reading, if you come to a word and you don't understand it, do not do as some teachers have told you in the past, which is just keep reading, you'd be grand. Don't do that. If you come to a word that you don't understand, always, always stop, clear it up, make some sentences with it, and then once you understand the word in that particular paragraph, you then move on. Why? Because if you don't, here's what happens. You go blank, you lose interest, and you start daydreaming. This happens directly after you pass by words you do not fully understand. A little example for you. When I was, uh, well, many years ago, I wanted to learn to play the guitar. So I thought, you know something, I need to learn a bit first before I get into practicing, okay? So I started this study business and I decided, you know what, the best place to start is guitar music theory. Guitar music theory. Wonderful. Didn't look up many words, I maybe looked at one or two, but didn't look up the symbols, didn't look up the basics. How long do you think I lasted? Exactly, not very long. I gave up extremely quickly. So any of the subjects that you were interested in in the past, that you wanted to get good at, the main reason why you gave them up is because there were words that you passed by that you didn't understand, understood, and you lost interest. And to get that back, all you'd have to do is go back and clear up those words. So now, next exercise. I want you to put into the chat an example of one subject that you wanted to learn about, but you gave up, okay? One subject that you started learning and you were interested, but then you just dropped it. You quit, you gave up. You dropped out of course, you know, you started studying computer animation and it was really interesting and then you just decided, oh no, it's not for me. I know I was really interested, but I, I'm much better, I'm much better at uh, cleaning the carpet. So just write in the chat an example of one area of your life where you started studying a subject and you just gave up. Okay, let's see what we have. Holly, biology, Harvey, drop shipping. Understood, anybody who doesn't know what that is is basically people buy from you and you get another supplier to send them the product. Very good, Harvey. Uh, Lewis, Acton, Nick Hill, stock and crypto markets. Anybody who doesn't know crypto is basically, how do you explain crypto, Nihil? It's basically like digital currency type thing. Danielle, sales. Rhoda, medical administration. Yawar, Python. And Python, I believe, is some software program to make your computer work amazingly well in certain circumstances. Uh, Sergio, play any instrument. And Fernando, stocks and shares. Interestingly enough, the whole stock market comes up. Uh, let's take the stock market, right? Anybody who wants to invest, okay? The biggest issue you're going to run into when you start learning about stocks and shares is this exact barrier. There's loads of new words 
that you come to, you don't get it, you just try, you keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, and you just fall apart. It's very difficult unless you understand those words properly. So with each of you who have put those subjects down, as an experiment, sometime when you have time, make a list, have a think about those subjects and make a list of those words you didn't understand. Or even better, go back to the materials you were studying, see if there's any words you didn't get, clear them up in a dictionary, make some sentences until you got it, and then lights will shine. And you're gonna become more competent just by knowing. And then you can start practicing and then get experience. But this comes first. This is first study, okay? I know you didn't want me to be talking about study, but it's really, really important when it comes to confidence, okay? Anybody that you know who is very confident in a certain area of their life, they are also very good. They know about it. So it's, it's useless uh, to tell you that it's not relevant because it is extremely important. This is one area study if you if you know how to study properly and honestly we were not taught this in schools anybody i've spoken to you just were not taught these basics in schools this guy broke down some really key basics which when you learn them you're gonna study much more easily it's going to be much more smooth for you okay so thank you folks now i'm going to touch off two other things before i get to the main thing because I'm flying along and I'm just going to run out of time. I, I need to get a body double or something. Somebody to give me a second webinar, that's me as well, that can also do this on a, second, on a second screen. And you can have one Vincent in one ear and the other Vincent in the other ear. I'm sure that's possible technologically. Okay, next one. This is number two. I'm touching off this very quickly, and that is communication. Okay? Communication skill. This is vital. We all know people who are very good in communicating. And when you're very good in communicating, it leads to confidence. You feel better about yourself. It doesn't particularly matter whether you're big or small or fat or skinny or beautiful or not so beautiful. It doesn't matter about those things. Once you are able to communicate with other people, you are going to feel confident. Now, years ago, I had a friend of mine, friend, who, sorry, don't mean to be sarcastic, but I thought he was a great communicator. He used to talk at me, talk at me, talk at me, talk at me, and I was shy at the time. Talk at me, talk at me, talk at me. I thought, this guy's amazing. But you know what was missing? This guy wasn't a good communicator at all, because all he could do was a one-way flow, okay? Communication is a two-way flow. There has to be a balance of outflow and inflow. And so, if you learn the key basics of communication, and I'm telling you right now, you don't have to go to a four-year college degree course to learn the basics of communication. Uh, Ta-da! There's a booklet here which literally saved my life in terms of getting out of shyness and learning how to talk to people and learning how to get on with people and learning how to feel confident. If you have good communication skill, your confidence is going to naturally come up, okay? In this booklet, there's loads of pictures on it, right? It shows you all the basic ingredients that you absolutely have to have in place to have very good communication. One of them is to acknowledge. I'm sure you've noticed that when you put a comment in on this webinar, I usually acknowledge it because it's good manners. And it tells the person that you're listening to them and you are understanding them. And sometimes somebody puts in a comment and I don't understand it, I usually and often will ask them, what do you mean? Okay, so one key thing just to touch off is acknowledge. When someone is talking to you, let them know that you have heard what they said. Don't give people the silent treatment because it stresses people out. When they've said something, 
acknowledge them. And if they're talking to you all the time, at a certain point, you're going to have to say something. It doesn't matter what. Just say, it's a nice day today. Or, I saw the football match last night. Or, I saw Manchester City beating Manchester United. Or, I saw, I didn't know, I saw pigeons in London. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's got to be relevant, of course. All you need are a couple of basics. Now, in this booklet, it shows you what those basics are, right? And then it gives you a whole heap of exercises that you can do with a friend or a family member to improve your communication skill. And you can literally do this over a weekend, okay? Very important to handle your communication skill, okay? Now, finally, I'm going to leave that point. And by the way, you don't have to write this into the chat, okay? Um, Harvey, the book is by the same author who wrote the Dianetics book, L. Ron Hubbard. Okay, there you go. Now, I'm not going to give you this as an exercise. What I'm going to tell you to do is this. Just think about people in your life who can communicate. And you'll notice that they come across confident as well, because these things go hand in hand. Okay, next thing. This is really important as well. Um, you just want to touch off it, but it is vital. It's vital to know this, okay? And this is number three, and this word is suppression. Okay? To suppress means to push down, okay? So, here's an interesting fact, okay? There's you, and you want to improve yourself. If you didn't, you wouldn't be on this webinar. So you are at this webinar because you want to improve yourself, and you want to maybe help people, okay? Very good. So everybody, we're all wanting to go better. We want to have a better job. We want to get to know more people. We want to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and have kids, maybe get married, you know, have success, have plenty of money, have a nice car. You know, you want to succeed on your dreams. But one for one, once you start improving yourself, once you start wanting to help people, once you start wanting to do something for others and your life, you are going to run into people who will put you down. Okay? You're going to run into people who will attack you, say bad things about you, lie about you, criticize you, tell you you're no good. You are going to run into people who are just downright nasty. Now look, underneath it all, I believe people are basically good underneath it, but that doesn't change the fact that when you want to achieve something in your life and you want to expand, you are going to run into people who will try to cut you to ribbons, who will try in subtle ways, in very indirect ways, to tear you apart by making you doubt yourself. So let's say, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have this dream and you want to become, let me just take, okay, you want to get married, okay? I want to get married. You say, you know what? I've done a course on it now. I'm going to find myself the right girl. I'm going to get married and I'm going to have kids. And you go on and you start joining clubs to try and find the right person, okay? And your good old buddy that you've had here for the last five or ten years, good old buddy, who seems to be really nice, he's such a nice guy, so pleasant, always nice to you, always brought you to the pub and got you drunk, always was there to provide you with the drugs that you needed when you needed them, such a good guy. I'm very sarcastic at times. Okay, there's more sarcasm to come, by the way. More sarcasm. This guy, as your friend, oh, because he cares about you so much, tells you you're better off exactly on your own. You're better off on your own. You can't trust women. You can't trust anybody out there. What course did you do on how to improve marriage? That's a whole heap of nonsense. I'm not going to get into this in more detail because 
surprise, surprise, there is a booklet called The Cause of Suppression, which explains to you how to identify people who will, in a very subtle way, try to cut you down. The reason I'm mentioning this is because if you don't spot it, and there are 12 characteristics which you can use to spot somebody who is antisocial. There's a, a picture there, 80% of people are usually fine, and there's usually a certain percentage who will try to drag you down, okay? And there's 12 characteristics which help you to identify that, and then the rest of this booklet shows you how to deal with it. And the reason I'm mentioning it to you is this, is that when you run into somebody like this, they are going to make you question yourself. And you won't realize it. Ah, I don't think I'll get married. Actually, it was a stupid idea. Ah, that was just a dream to get married and have kids. Joe, we're going to the pub after all. Ah, yeah, Joe, you know what? You care about me so much. And let's go to the pub for another drink. And maybe we can fit in some drugs while we're at. Okay? So... The, the piece of advice here is this. Obviously, I'm going to show you how to get this booklet at the end, right? But just be aware of it. When you start to expand, you are going to run into people who will want to put you down. Just be aware of it. You don't have to be treated like a doormat. If you want good things in life, you don't deserve to have some slimy, sneaky person trying to come in and rip you to shreds and pull the carpet out from underneath your feet. So just be aware of it. You deserve respect. You deserve to be treated with politeness and, and, uh, and honesty. And if you are running into somebody like this, there are approaches that you can take. There are some approaches that I recommend and some approaches that I definitely do not recommend. Okay? And you can learn about them in the booklet. Okay? All I want you to do is be aware of this. There's a whole webinar I could put together on this, but it's all pretty much explained in that booklet, which I'll show you at the end. Now, those are three little basics. Okay. So we'll recap. Number one, study. Learn how to study properly. Then you'll be able to practice well. Then get good experience. Your competence will grow, and so will your confidence. Number two is communication. Learn the basics of communication, practice them with a friend or a family member, and you would be amazed at how well your communication grows and your confidence grows. And number three, watch out for direct people who want to put you down and friends who are apparently telling you, we're doing it for your own good. You know, you're a best friend. I'm only telling you because I don't want you to get let down. Oh, you know, while looking at you with a sneaky eye. Just be aware of people in your life who are driving you the opposite direction to success. In other words, they're sending you down to failure. Okay, last and most important point of the evening, okay, is this. It is so vital that if you don't have this one in, it is going to affect all the other three, okay? And this last point, is basically thought, okay? How you think. Are you in control of your thinking or are you not in control of your thinking? Do you think positively or do you think negatively, okay? For example, you think, you know something, I might not be the best looking person in the whole world, but you know, I believe I can go out there and find the right partner. I believe I can get married. I can have kids. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Or you can have this negative thought, which is, oh, God, I'm never going to make it. I'm too small. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too ugly. I'm too nice. I'm too this. I'm too that. I'm a walk. You know, those negative thoughts. And these, if you don't handle these negative thoughts, they ruin your confidence in yourself. Because remember, the word confidence comes from, con is an old Latin word, it just means to make stronger, okay? 
And Federa means, it comes from Federa, which means to trust. Okay? So when you have confidence in somebody, or if you have confidence in your car, you trust your car. Or you trust your horse to bring you to the fair. Or you trust that your work associate is not going to mess you around. Okay? So self-confidence basically means trust in self. But your self-confidence is going to be determined by how you think. So if you're thinking positively, naturally, then life is going to go better. Now, a lot of people, what they do, what they do is they try this thing called positive thinking. Okay? We've all heard of it. We've read things on Facebook or on Instagram, how to think positive, how to achieve your goals by thinking positive. Nothing wrong with the idea. But wouldn't it be much, much better if you could just think positively, naturally, without all this force, without all this effort? Because the problem with trying to force yourself to think positive, <laughs> I'm a good person, I really am, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I can do what I can do. The problem with trying to force yourself all the time is that it doesn't last very long and you have to keep doing it, you have to keep doing it. So, now, where do your positive thoughts come from? Well, the reason you come up with thoughts, positive or negative, is because you have a mind. You're able to think. And your mind is basically a collection of experiences that you have stored in your past. Okay? And each one of you has pictures. Don't mind all this mumbo jumbo about the brain. I better put the words in my opinion in front of all this, just in case uh, anybody kind of thinks that I'm, I'm trying to knock them, which I'm not. Okay? There's so much babble, in my opinion, going on about how your thoughts are all in your brain and your meat, and it's just a chemical imbalance, this, and it's a chemical, chemical, sorry, tongue tied, chemical imbalance, that, and it's really because the left side of your brain is not communicating with the right side of your brain. So the solution is we're going to pump you full of drugs for the next six to eight years and you'll be grand. Okay? I am totally not into that theory. Um, anyway, don't like the whole drugs approach because it's just kind of like a, a kind of patching a person up with just making them dependent on these things. Your mind is basically a collection of pictures of your experiences. And we're going to do a little demo of this now. Your mind is a collection of pictures from your past. And they do exist. They're not just imaginary. They're not just not existing. They do exist. You have pictures that you're carrying around from your past. This is what we call the mind. So here's the little demo I want you to do, okay? Now, I'm not going to know if you do this. I'm just going to trust that you will. So here's the demo. Ready? Close your eyes. Okay. Remember your breakfast this morning, or if you didn't have breakfast, lunch. All right. See if you can remember the smell. Okay, see if you can remember what you see. Okay, see if you can remember what you hear. Okay, see if you can remember the taste. Okay, open your eyes. Now, by a show of hands, let me know, or a smiley face, let me know if you were able to do that. And pop it in the chat, would you please? You can even put your thumbs up, or you can put a smiley face, or you can say, no, I couldn't do it, or anything like that. Could you remember that picture? Okay. Uh, uh, Danielle, thank you very much. Fernando, Lewis, Harvey, um, excellent. Good. Okay. That is simply a picture. You saw it. It exists, and your mind is a collection of pictures from your past. If your mind is in very good condition, 
and you're able to think clearly, your thoughts are going to be naturally positive, believe it or not. You might not know everything in the world. You might not know how to drive a car, but your thoughts will be positive and you start thinking, you know what? I don't know how to drive a car. I don't know how to find a girlfriend. I don't know how to find a boyfriend. I don't know how to improve myself socially. But you know what? I can learn. I can learn. And that is still a positive thought. So if your mind is in good condition, your thoughts are going to be naturally positive, regardless of whether you know how to do something or not. Okay? So there's going to be a level of confidence there in yourself. Now, where do the negative thoughts come from? Why is it that you think negative sometimes, but you don't want to? You don't want to be thinking negative, but yet all these negative thoughts are kicking in. Let's remove the smile from this side's face. Negative, 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 negative. And this person is like, oh, you know what? I think I'm worthless. The reason your thoughts are not under your control and which cause you to have negative thoughts is because there is a section of this mind which is not under your control. Okay? Not under your control. So this one is not under control. And in Dianetics, which is the subject, I'll show you the book again, which I showed you at the beginning. In the subject, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes, we have a name for this part of your mind that is not under your control and which causes you to think thoughts that you don't want to be thinking. You think, you know something, I should stay in tonight and study. But then this thought comes in, go to the pub and get absolutely hammered drunk, even though you have an exam the next day. Doesn't make sense. This part of your mind in Dianetics is called the reactive mind. Why is it called reactive? Because it triggers off. It's a trigger part of the mind. In other words, all it takes is for you to have a similar experience in present time to trigger off something from the past which can affect the way you think without your consent. So let me give you this again. Your reactive mind is a part of your mind which is not under your control. It doesn't think logically, which is the way you normally think. In everyday life, you normally think logically. But it's a part of your mind that doesn't think logically. Logic is out the window. Doesn't make sense. So, next question. What's in here? There are two things. Okay, And they come under one definition. These two things come under this definition of pain. Physical, for example, if you got bitten by a dog, or if you had an operation, or if you got mugged, or if somebody boxed you on the head walking down the street, physical pain. The next one is loss. You lose somebody close to you, you lose your business, you lose a parent, you lose a child, you lose your car, you lose your job. Physical pain and losses get stored in here. They don't get stored up here. And these things can get triggered without your consent, even if it's years ago. So let me give you an example. Let's say here, there's an incident where you were bitten by a dog, okay? At the age of five, okay? Now you are, I don't know, 17 years of age, and you see a nice girl, and you think, you know something? I'd like to get to know this girl a little bit better. I'd like to get to know her. And so what you do is, uh, you go on a date with this girl, okay? She's a nice girl, and all the rest of it. The only trouble is, uh, she says, is it okay if I bring my pet? And you're thinking, oh, yeah, that's fine. What, is it a cat? And she says, no, no, it's a little doggy. Okay? Now, unfortunately, that dog that she's just brought with her, is the same color, a uh, blue dog, okay? Okay, fine. 
as the dog that bit you back here. Now you have forgotten about this incident, but your reactive mind has not forgotten. So what it does is this. It sees the dog, the reactive mind goes, uh oh, danger. It could be a completely different dog. It could be a very nice dog. And it tells you, stay away, messes up your thinking, and then you start distrusting this girl. There's no reason not to trust her, but you start to get skeptical of her, wary, cautious, and you start to worry about yourself, you start to doubt of yourself. Okay, next example. Let's say you lose somebody close to you. Let's say you have a loss here where you're going out with a girl and you love her. You've been going out with her for 10 years. You're now 25 and you decide, you know what, today is the day I'm going to propose to this girl. And you spend a thousand euros on a ring. You get down on one knee and you say, Mary, sweet Mary, here we are on the top of the Eiffel Tower, pretty much. Will you do me the honor of being my lawful wedded wife? And she turns around to you and says, unfortunately, I needed to tell you something about me and your brother. Me and your brother have been going strong now for the last six years. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but listen, if you could give me the ring anyway, it'll come in handy. Okay, massive, massive loss. Hits you, very heavy. Takes a long time to recover. And here you are years later now, and you decide, you know what? I'm gonna get myself into a relationship. And you start going out with this other girl. It's going fine for a couple of weeks until one evening, she doesn't turn up for dinner, okay? And she won't answer her phone. And you know that you've caught her friends, they don't know where she is. And immediately what happens is this triggers off this and you start reacting. You start getting stressed out. You start thinking to yourself, oh no, I'm just no good. She's leaving me. She's leaving me for another guy. I know it's happening. I know this is what's happening. She's going to leave me for sure. I'm just not good enough. When the actual truth is that she got a flat tire in her car and she ran out of charge and her battery and it took her four hours to get home. What I'm saying to you is this. There is a part of your mind which stores all of those bad experiences from your past and they're nice and packaged down below the surface. You're probably not even aware of them. You're probably not thinking about them. You're thinking, Vincent, sure, that's in the past now. We're only looking towards the future. I'm telling you right now, yes, the future is ahead and you need to work on the future using the techniques I told you earlier. But regardless of how you're feeling, happy or sad, you are carrying around a package of past failures, losses, um, accidents, operations, bad experiences that you've had with your family, relationships, in past jobs that you've had, and you think maybe the time has healed it all and you'll be grand. And maybe you feel fine. But what I'm telling you is, all it takes is for one thing to go wrong again to trigger off the whole lot. So the most important and the, the most frequent thing which affects your confidence is your reactive mind. How do I know that? Vincent, how do you know that? It's because when you clear up all this stuff, the person naturally regains a positive opinion of themselves and is able to live again and is able to expand and do better in life. Okay, so here's your next practical exercise. I want you to write down in the chat one thing, just one thing that triggers you. In other words, you're feeling great, you're feeling confident, and then all it takes is one thing to knock you. Is it somebody criticizing you? Is it the weather? Is it if you haven't had enough sleep? No. Give me an example of one thing that triggers you off and sends you down that way. I'll pop it into the chat if you don't mind. And then I'm going to tell you we're going to be wrapping up. I'm going to give you a little quick summary and then tell you what you should do next or recommend something. Have I missed a few bits and bobs here? I see in everybody's facial comments and all that type of stuff. Uh, okay. Okay, Lewis, critics from people? Yeah, good one. So you're doing fine. 
and then somebody comes along and criticizes you and says you should just go home. Good example. Uh, Danielle, somebody being rude, very good example, okay? And you know what? Often these people who are being rude are doing it deliberately. I'm sorry, uh, I used to be a very forgiving type of a guy. Now, I wouldn't say ruthless, but just more realistic, okay? Next one, interestingly, it's on the same line. Uh, Danielle, uh, Fernando, bullying at work. Popular one. You're trying to be successful. You're trying to get that promotion. You're trying to do well, and somebody just wants to take you down, okay? Good example. Uh, Margaret, again, the same thing. Uh, if somebody dismisses my opinion, brilliant, you say, you know what, I love uh, roses. And somebody says, sure, roses are stupid. Okay, good example, Margaret. Fiona, people reading me. Okay, now that's a really, uh, Fiona, I actually love that one. Because, you know, you're trying to say to somebody, you know what, I love roses. And they're looking at you going, hmm, interesting. I wonder why you love roses. Let's have a look deep into your past and understand why you love roses. Yeah, You know, it, it can be very introverting and often quite deliberate. Okay. Uh, let's see, next one, presenting in front of people who had a bad experience one time. Okay, Harvey, very good example. And if you clear that up, it might just make you feel much better about going out and doing that again. Okay, and then next one, I got from, uh, okay, Danielle got that. Uh, somebody in fear, okay? So somebody who is afraid triggers you off and you are expectations. And I'm imagining what you're saying is somebody saying, right, I expect you to do this and that and the other. Good, strong target. You might not think it's realistic, but the person insists it gets done. Okay. Thank you so much, folks. It makes a big difference for me that you participate. I really appreciate it. Now, quick summary. You need to learn how to study properly. If you do, your confidence is going to rise in any area that you want to be good at. And any of those areas, social, work, business, relationships, any of those areas. Number two, communication skill. You have to improve your communication skill it can get much better in a very short space of time if you know the basics. Number three, people putting you down in life. You have to know how to spot them and how to handle them correctly. Correctly, okay? And number three, the most important thing, you have to learn how to clear up the baggage, the pain from your past, okay? And it's not done by just forgetting about it. As I'll go over in this book with you in a minute, you need somebody else to work with and there's a 10 step technique which helps you to be able to handle each one of those incidents completely and fully so that you are back to your natural self-confidence again. Now, we're coming towards the end of the webinar. I want to tell you um, before I ask questions and answers because I'm going to wrap up the webinar in a few minutes uh, but I want to show you what I've put together for you, which I would strongly recommend, because guess what? Okay, first of all, if you don't handle this, it grows. Because the more bad experiences you have in the future, it latches on to the past and it grows. So if you don't handle this, if you have lack of confidence now and you don't get the root of it, to the root of it, it, it usually gets worse. You get temporary ups, but it usually gets worse, okay? You have to clear it up. And so it's really vital to actually completely and utterly handle it, okay? Now, people say, Vincent, give me the magic wand. Vinny, just, just take the magic wand out of your back pocket, wave it at me, bing, make me confident, Vincent. Make me confident. Oh, that's great. But it doesn't work like that. The very first step, and I'm sorry to tell you the bad news. It's not really bad news. First step, education. It's all very well, me telling you about these things. It's all great, you should do this, you should do that, you should do that, but you need to learn yourself. So what I've put together is I've put together for you, for everybody who has stayed with me tonight, a special offer on this book's package that I've presented with you tonight, and here it is. So the first thing I want you to do, and there'll be a link going up in a few minutes, get the Dianetics book. This shows you the basics of how your mind works. So let me just go over a couple of the points about the Dianetics book for you, okay? First one, the real source of unwanted behavior and thought and emotions, okay? So you really learn what the root of negative thinking is. 
Full discovery of the parts of the mind and how they work. Very simply, there are two major divisions of your mind. You learn what they are in this book and it makes things an awful lot simpler. Number three, exact step-by-step -step therapy to fully use your mind to unlock your full potential. This teaches you in book three of this book exactly how to clear up the past bad experiences so that you're not being affected by them. The book has been translated into 50 languages and it is sent with free shipping. There's 500 pages in this book. It's a nice meaty book and there's an absolutely beautiful glossary at the back for any words you don't understand and a very, very, very easy book to read uh, in that way. And the, the writing is very beautifully laid out, very artistically laid out, okay? Now, so with that, I told you about these booklets and I'm just gonna show you, I don't have a picture for these booklets. Um, uh, three books. Uh, I'm going to start at the bottom. The Technology of Study is the basic book which shows you how to study properly. This will teach you how to use some simple basics to make your study faster and teach your kids how to study properly for the first time in their lives so that they do well and are successful in life. That book, okay? Next book is Communication. This is the booklet I showed you about. There are practical drills in this booklet which show you step by step um, things that you can do to improve your communication skill on an immediate basis and you can do this with a friend or a family member at home and there's even an, a free online course that you can get with this book which you can do uh, over the internet okay and then number three is this book cause of suppression this is vital data it helps you to be able to identify who the good guys are and who the guys are that aren't really wanting you to survive and do well in life. Very important to be able to identify the good from the bad and to know exactly how to handle them properly. And that's explained fully in this book. Vital. Okay, so now, uh, cost-wise. In terms of these three booklets, the books come together, right? So the Dianetics book and the three books. Uh, the Dianetics book on its own and the three books. Dianetics book is 20 and the three books are 15, so it's basically 35 euros for the whole lot, okay? Now, if you get the booklets, the books tonight, uh, you get them for 25, and it's sent out with free shipping. So that's a special offer for anybody who stayed with us tonight, right until the end, and I'm gonna be keeping that offer open for the next 10 or 15 minutes while questions and answers are on. Anybody who wants to stay for questions and answers. Um, so that's the book. The Dianetics book, which is 500 pages, shows you how to get to the root. The book, and by the way, these are workbooks as well. So they're not just little books. There's an actual workbook in it. And there's a free online course that you can do for each workbook. Um, the, the, the technology of study, how to study properly. How to improve your communication skill. That's a workbook. Loads of practical exercises. And again, something that you can do is a free course online that goes with that book. And then the cause of suppression, which is shows you how to identify people who want to put you down in life. And plus, it shows you how to handle it. And again, there's a free online course which goes with that booklet as well. Okay. So, those are the three I recommended. Now, Vincent, why are you telling us to get books? Because you need to make up your own mind. And this is a vital opportunity for you to do it. You know, if all these books did for you, was help you to get your confidence to a level where you could open that business, where you could improve your social interactions, where you could move up in your job, where you could uh, you know, set a goal and achieve it. It would be worth it, right? If all it did was help you to kind of clear up the failures from your past, I think it would be worth it too, you know? So these are the books. I would strongly recommend them. Um, if you get the books tonight before we wrap up, and there's a link going up there for them, uh, you get it for 25 euros instead of 35, and they'll be sent to you pretty much straight away with free shipping. And then if you've any questions on any of them, you can always email us back and we'll help you with any of those questions on the books, okay? Right, now, so now that I've showed you that, I want to leave it open now uh, for the next few minutes for anybody who has any questions. So what I want to do is keep it open there for anybody who's left and who wants to answer, or sorry, ask any questions, okay? So I'm gonna pause 
I'm going to thank everybody who's still with me on all the other platforms. Harvey, Yower is left, Margaret, Fernando, Sergio, Sandra, and Danielle. I'm going to pause for you to uh, pop into the chat any questions that you have while I have a drink from this grey bottle. Okay? As I've been talking a lot, as you've seen, as you've heard. Your questions can be about anything I've covered tonight. It can be about the books, and it can be even about your own personal situation. You might like, might like me to give you a bit of direction on it. Uh, probably direct you to the books, but I'll, I'll see what I'll do. Okay. Um, Sandra, you've already got the book. Brilliant. Help you with your dyslexia. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a great book. The stuff that I learned from this book, right? When I was in college, uh, I came across this because I went traveling and I came back to college. I jumped from number 65 in the class to number six uh, with a lot less studying because it was much more proper studying. So a really, really effective stuff. Harvey, does the book help heal the reactive mind? Well, this is the book, Harvey, the Dianetics book, which is the one that basically helps you to completely clear up what is in that reactive mind. Uh, so the first step is a bit of education on how it works because sometimes people come to me and they say, oh, Vincent, we need a session. Please give me a session. And I'll say, good, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know anything about it? Not really, no. Good. So the first thing to do is learn a bit about it. Okay, and so I recommend that people read the book, people who've read the book understand it more. When they're in a session, they know how it works. It goes much faster. It goes more stably. And so you, the answer is yes. It explains to you how to clear up all that stuff in the reactive mind so that you are back to yourself again. Harvey, hope that helped you. And Sylvia just popped in there with the question. Uh, let's see. Okay. And Yawar, I didn't say a chance to say thank you, but yes, he gave a nice little thank you. Appreciate the insights. Okay, that's fantastic. Good. Okay, anybody else? Any questions? Good, good, Harvey. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, Margaret, absolutely no problem. You are very welcome. It is my absolute pleasure. Hope to see you again. Any other questions? Who do we have? I mean, obviously, if anybody is on any of the other platforms, uh, like Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, you can always put your comments in and bring them around. They'll come around to me because I have somebody keeping an eye on those channels. Okay. Um, Okie dokie. All right. You're buying the books. Brilliant, Danielle. Absolutely delighted. Get them. Yeah, they're good. And if you have any questions at all, you can always contact us. And if you have any further questions from me, you can contact our email address and uh, one of the guys will send it around to me as well, okay? Uh, Sandra, do we order the books from the link or some other way? I believe the link, but Sylvia will be able to reach out with the answer to that question for you, uh, Sandra. Okay, um, very good. There it is again. And so just to kind of give you one last little thing, uh, before we wrap up tonight, I've just got three people left. I'm not going to keep you here half the night. We've got three people, so we'll just go over the last couple of things very quickly. You know, I really love when people turn up at these webinars because the people who end up on these webinars are people who actually want to improve life or they want to help somebody else improve life, which is the same thing. And it is actually my pleasure to be able to give people tools that they can use to make that easier. Because honestly, when you look out there, there's so much stuff on the internet, so many different people's opinions on different things that it can be a big confusion. And so if you have your, um, your basics, if you know the basics, that gives you a kind of a platform to basically start from. And what I have here are really just basics. There's more to learn, but if you have these basics in and you know them well, it's going to create a very stable uh, starting point for you in your life. And you know, this made a dramatic difference to my life. Uh, for people I've helped with these materials and I, I, when you're applying these, you will see the difference, you know? And as, in, as they say, don't take my word for it, try it yourself. And by using the books, you'll be able to get the opportunity. Okie dokie. Um, okay, 
So uh, if you don't have any other questions, uh, oh, does anybody have any comments, anything that you learned from the webinar tonight? Uh, if you do, you can pop it in. And if you don't, that's okay. And Fernando Grand, you have, uh, I'm glad that you find it insightful. I get very passionate about these things. You probably see me on this webinar, I'm going, come on, you know, let's go for it and give you the data because honestly, it's made a massive, massive difference uh, for me and the people I've loved. Okay, folks, so listen, we'll wrap up. Thank you all so much for staying till the end. The diehards, Fernando, Sandra, and Danielle, and thank you very much to the whole Sylvia as well. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you've got the materials. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, bring people the next time and I will say goodnight to you. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Good night. <laughs>